Hey guys, it's Pope. I am happy to be making this video today because the content is coming straight from you guys, what you want to hear. I put a ask me a question Instagram story together about what advice you guys need when it comes to weightlifting competitions. I am really happy to share some of these things with you guys because all of the questions that I picked out are kind of things that I struggled with and it would have been nice to hear some of these things from someone more experienced than myself. So this is an awesome opportunity for me to give back to the weightlifting community and help you guys out. There were a lot of good questions but I tried to narrow it down to 10 that seemed to have the most common themes within multiple questions and I'm going to try to breeze through them pretty quickly so that I can make this video efficient and not take up too much of your time. I figured this was perfect timing to talk about this topic since it has been revealed that the AO3 in Vegas coming up is a record-breaking meet with 1,600 athletes. I believe it was like 1,650 athletes are registered for this meet. It's going to be huge. Okay, first question is, how can a beginner find local meets and how often should you compete? First question is really easy to answer and it's an important one for those of you trying to get involved in USA Weightlifting. That is the only federation you can compete in here in America. Um, that is for beginners all the way through feeding to the Olympic team. So we have that one option and outlet for competition. So to find local meets, you can go on the USAW website, which I will overlay right here for you guys and you can pick it out by state I believe and um, there's constantly updating calendar and all of the meets to choose from are there. As far as how often to compete, you don't want to be competing too often because you don't want to be peaking too often. You want to give yourself time to develop strength, not always be testing your lift numbers. So it's hard to answer uh, from person to person how often that is. I think when you're more of a novice it's okay to compete more often and it helps you get that experience that you need. When you become more proficient at weightlifting and get more advanced, you want to make sure to space out your meets at least a couple months from each other so you have a nice long training cycle to work with that you can add some more strength. How to get comfortable in a singlet? Love this question. Being a gymnast, I kind of off the bat felt comfortable wearing a singlet, but I am friends with a lot of people that did not feel that way at all. And I think the best way to get comfortable with it is to wear it in the gym. You'll see me even on these vlogs wear my legless singlet in training a lot of the time. I just really feel like I want to be training my lifts in my competition outfit. So that is my biggest advice is just put on your singlet and head to the gym. Those people that you're training with have to compete in a singlet as well. So they're not going to think anything of it. And maybe you can even plan like singlet Saturdays. I know a lot of teams that do that or even... Uh, I know Maddie Rogers at one point called it Freedom Friday. She would wear her USA singlet. Gyms and weightlifting clubs do stuff like that all the time. And I think that's the best way to get confident. Wearing a singlet on the competition platform is to start wearing it to practice. Next question. How to drown out the audience and stay focused and not miss on purpose when you get nervous? That's a really complicated uh, situation, but I totally understand this question. When you get so nervous and then just completely psych yourself out and then talk yourself into missing basically. And I think a big way to combat that is through positive affirmations. And I'm going to talk about that with some of these other questions later on. But at the end of the day, no one in the audience cares if you make the lift or not. I mean, they're there spectating and if they're like your friends and family, of course they want you to make the lift so that you're happy. But at the end of the day, that's all that matters, that you're happy. So the audience watching you doesn't really have any impact on or like judgment on the outcome. And when you think of it that way, you're still really only lifting for yourself out there. I mean, I understand like feeling embarrassed if you miss, but if you can kind of understand that no one cares, <laughs> I, that might sound a little bit blunt, but especially when you're like a beginner or even intermediate or even advanced lifters, People will care for about 20 seconds and then they'll forget about it and then move on with their day. So if you can kind of think of it like your meat only really matters to you, it kind of takes away the power of the audience. And if you're walking up to the platform cueing your technique and picturing yourself making the lift, that's going to go a long way 
instead of thinking, oh, I don't want to miss in front of these people, and then letting those nerves like overtake you. So it's a lot of just the way that you talk to yourself and focusing on your technical cues can really drown out the noise of the audience. What are some good expectations or goals for a first meet? Love this question. I talk about this with my clients all the time. Your first meet needs to be a positive experience because it's setting up your entire career how you feel about competing. So the biggest thing as far as it comes to the lifts themselves is to make sure you pick your openers weights that you could make literally the moment you got out of bed in the morning with a fever. <laughs> like when you're feeling your absolute worst, you know you could still get that weight over your head and get those white lights. Once you get your first lift in, then you can kind of play with your numbers a little bit. But you also want to make as many lifts as possible so you come out of the meet feeling really good about yourself. You don't want to go two for six in your first meet. You want to go four or maybe even six for six at your first meet so that you get addicted to competing and that's what's going to keep you in the sport for a long time and keep you enjoying your hobby for a long time. We don't do this to make money, we don't do this for any reason besides to have fun at the end of the day. That's what sports are about and you want that first competition experience to be fun. It's really important. So pick those weights you know you're going to smash and make that your main goal is to just enjoy the experience and have fun. How to find someone to count for you or how to fly solo at a crowded meet? Super important question when you get to the level of competing at these jam-packed big meets. You are not always going to be able to have a personalized coach. It just doesn't work like that when you have meets that have literally M sessions, like M like mountain. So you got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to M. So you can't expect a coach with 25 lifters at the meet to be able to be in like five different places at once when there's so many platforms. So I think when you are newer to weightlifting or even like intermediate in weightlifting, you can figure out how to count your attempts by someone that's lifting close to what you're lifting. It's okay to piggyback off of someone else's warm-up attempts if they're lifting weights really close to yours and you'll have to kind of learn how to read the board as well to see how many attempts you're out. So I would suggest if your coach can't be with you at the meet, at least have him show you how to count how many attempts away your lift would be. Or like say your opener is 65 kilos and you see this other girl that's opening at 67 kilos, all of your warm-ups one attempt right in front of her and you'll be set up pretty much on point for your opener. Now, you could also find someone with numbers super close to yours and ask their coach if you could warm up with them, and that's a really good way to do it as well. Especially at these crowded meets like Vegas, I'm willing to bet people would rather do that and like share their responsibility versus trying to be in five places running back and forth from platforms. I think there's going to be a lot of coaches having to work together at this meet, so be willing to communicate with other coaches because the only way these giant meets are going to work is if people are nice to each other. Okay, next question. Is it okay to try a PR in competition? If you have some experience competing, like it's not your like maybe first, second, or third meet, I think it's totally cool to try a PR in competition. And it is so much fun when you do it. I mean, you're peaked, you trained for this big event, that is the time to hit that PR. This would be planned for your third attempt. So to get there, you have to be making that first and second attempt. So you have to pick your weights of those weights you know you're going to hit and that are going to set you up to where you can load that PR on the bar without making a huge jump. So it's a little bit tricky on your weight selection. But if you've already hit two lifts, you know you're going to total, go for it on that third attempt. I tried that with the 113 at Nationals. That would have been a 3 kilo all-time PR clean and jerk. Didn't stand it up, but it still felt good to load it up and really like put it all in on the platform for an all-time PR. How to deal with anxiety, nerves, and stress of a meet. Kind of what I talked about earlier is to take the pressure off of it being too different than just a training day because at the end of the day, it's all about you and what you want out of the experience. It doesn't really matter to anyone else 
doesn't matter to those in the crowd. It doesn't matter to your coach because they've invested a lot in you preparing you for the event. But at the end of the day, it's an individual sport and it is about you and your goals. So if you can kind of take the outside factors pressure off yourself and focus on what you're there to do, I think that can take a lot of the nerves away. And also just accepting nerves as part of the competition experience. It's excitement. Nerves are a form of excitement. And if you can use that to your benefit, they can actually be useful. If you can turn your nerves into adrenaline and that is going to come out as power and explosiveness in your lifts, that's a good thing. So maybe necessarily looking at nerves as a bad thing isn't the way to go and you can look at it as being excited and feeling like you've worked really hard and you want success. There's nothing bad about wanting to be successful. As far as stress goes, stress can be a negative factor. If it's not nervous excitement and it's a negative emotion, that's something you do need to work on. And I think getting more experience from competitions will help with that. So sign up for more local meets and do some more meets with your friends and you will start to learn to not get stressed out about the competition and more look forward to competing because you're like, oh, I've done this a million times, I got this. How to regroup after a missed lift. I have missed my opener so many times when I was newer to weightlifting. Pretty familiar with this, unfortunately. That's not what you want. You want to be able to smoke your opener. I haven't been one to miss my opener in quite some time, but I did when I was more of a rookie in my career. I would miss my opener all the time. Probably from those nerves and stress I was talking about earlier. So, after you've missed the lift and you're sitting back in those chairs in the hallway, I think the best way to come back for it is to think about why you missed it. Don't think, holy shit, I just missed my opener, I'm gonna bomb out. It's the last thing you need to allow in your head. Think about why you missed it. Did you not finish your extension? Did you not stay over the bar? Were your elbows soft on the catch? And then, how are you gonna address it on the next attempt? Your cue for your next lift while you're chalking up, think about how to fix it. Stay over the bar. Push through my legs at the top. Really push against the bar on my catch. That's how you come back from a missed lift. It's not, holy shit, it's, let's do better. That's how you come back. Okay, tips on staying focused in the warm-up room and is it friendly? Sometimes. <laughs> I will say I've been in the back a few times and felt uncomfortable with the tension. It doesn't usually involve me, I don't think at least, but I've felt it between other lifters before and it's, it can be a little awkward, but that's more in like the, like top five, top seven lifters in the entire meet. I wouldn't say that it's like that in any of the other levels of lifters and any of the other sessions, like not in the A session. I wouldn't expect it to be like that, but then you always have these random salty people in the back room that think they're better than anyone else. I don't know why, but it is like that sometimes, and I think it's best to just focus on yourself, focus on what you're doing, focus on what your coach is telling you, and try to just not pay attention to any of that tension that might be going on in the back room. Especially at local meets, I really hope that's not happening, but I know it does sometimes. So the best thing to do is just stay in your zone, focus on your platform, become friends with the people that you're sharing your platform with, because at the end of the day, like I've mentioned before, we're doing this for fun, and local meets are not the Olympics. The American Opens are not the Olympics. At the end of the day, we're there to have fun, and it's great to meet people through lifting. So, if there's tension in the back room, or if you're like having to really zone in on yourself, try to keep that in mind, that like, uh, be the change you wanna see in the world, as corny as that is but your energy can impact the energy in the warm-up room and you can turn it around. As far as staying focused, I would be thinking about my next warm-up attempt while I'm sitting there and not watching other lifters warm up, not uh, watching someone miss a lift. That can be really distracting and get you away from thinking about your lift. If you're watching other people mess up and you're like, 
subconsciously analyzing their lifting. So stay focused on your technique cues. I really think that's a big thing throughout the whole meet is always have some cue you're thinking of. Even if that cue is just be powerful or be aggressive or stay patient if you're not one that wants to be thinking too technical during a meet. So always be like thinking about what you're going to focus on for your next warm-up lift. I think that's a really good way to kind of tune it all out. Okay, last question. How to mentally recover from a bomb out meet? Love this question because it was one of the biggest hurdles of my career having to come back from that bomb out in Taiwan. I bombed other meets before, but that one was the one that was like most hurtful to me. And you guys watched me come back at the Arnold and I came back super strong hitting PRs. So that was an awesome feeling to come back after such a low, low. The way I kind of tackled that mentally was basically that I was not going to allow that to happen again. My thought process could have been, I don't want that to happen again, but instead it was, I will not let that happen again. And there's a big difference in those two things because on game day at the Arnold, if I had been thinking about throughout my training cycle, I don't want to bomb, on game day I would have been thinking, I don't want to bomb. Instead, shifting your focus on like how you're going to improve yourself so basically, it is important to focus on the future and not keep looking back to the mistakes of the past. You have to grieve a little bit and be like disappointed about the bomb out because you trained hard for it, you invested a lot of time, and then it didn't work out in your favor. But then you gotta let it go and you gotta move forward and say, I'm gonna do better now. So game day at Arnold for me, on my comeback, I honestly didn't think about that bomb out one time. And I even chose to wear the same singlet and everything because I refuse to be superstitious about anything too. I wanted to prove to myself that my abilities were not on display at that bomb out meet and it was just a bad day and that is not who I am as an athlete. So I was there at the Arnold to show myself what I was capable of. I was not going to allow my thought process to be I don't want to fail again because that's setting up for failure. You have to focus on forward. Always forward, forward, forward. <laughs> not on the past. Forward. We're moving on. We're not going to remember that bomb out meat except for to use it as fuel for success in the future. So it's kind of just shifting your thought process away from the bomb out and forward to what awesome stuff you're going to do the next time. Not really sure I explained that well, but I tried. <laughs> really enjoyed making this video. Thank you guys for super awesome questions. This morning for training, I did a lot of accessory work, and that is something you guys are asking me to film more often. So I'm going to show you guys my workout today. I did a lot of fun, different exercises today. One of my main focuses is on balancing out any weak points in my leg strength to where I was doing a lot of shifting that led to that hip strain. So here's my workout from today. Mm -hmm. 